پادکست. Today with me on the AI Summit Kiss the Future from Sarajevo's National Theater Martin Baya is uh, uh, my guest from the Kiss Systems. Thank you. Thanks for uh, having me here. I'm really happy that you're here that we can discuss uh, as I've read from your biography and our small chit chat we had uh, yep. before the start of filming. Uh, you are the one uh, collecting, integrating data and playing with this AI from a, with a big knowledge. <laughs> yeah, you heard my speech on stage and I started uh, with, with data actually because uh, everyone talks about AI. But AI without any data is nothing. Yeah. And even if the data is, is somehow crap, you get crap out. You know, an AI model is built based on data. It's formed over a pretty long process not just for so-called large language models like we have in chat gpt also for other models in computer vision and in, in machine learning you need to rely on the data uh, to make somehow unstructured data applicably uh, usable and and that's that's uh, i think the base for any further ai discussion to make something good out of it yeah. i believe that it's uh data is obviously gold in these times that we are uh, living in, uh, how do we provide the, the best quality data? So I, I think that that topic is a bit overlooked. Everybody's speaking about the final products, but nobody is speaking about the infrastructure itself that we need to, to have yeah. that result. Sure. Well, talking about the subject, I was on stage, it, it was um, applying AI to the, um, to the health market for some meaningful things. Um, I see a trend in Switzerland, but also in Germany, um, that, that the hospitals collecting a lot of data, which they did already over the past uh, couple of years. Um, but they didn't really know what to do with the data. That's one thing. The other thing was that they, that they had uh, pretty different systems who didn't, didn't oper uh, interoperate to, with each other. So now they have a, a pretty historical kind of uh, data set up and they want to change it. And uh, Swiss uh, hospitals are spending a lot of money to go for a kind of uh, so-called clinical data repository, mm -hmm. which is a kind of data data lake for medical data in, 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 uh, in hospitals. And out of that repository, they take uh, information out to feed certain models for process automation, for uh, uh, research and, and other things. Mm -hmm. But the base is, is going to be set and then they will apply certain AI uh, applications and AI projects uh, on, on the data repository. Yeah. And uh, from your perspective and uh, from, from uh, the place you operate, what are the biggest obstacles or, or uh, problems that you face uh, with handling the, the AI? Well, um, the obstacles is um, that uh, one of the obstacles uh, and that was a surprise to me at a certain degree that when I heard that um, in, in Germany only 12% of the companies are, are using AI in a mm -hmm. professional way. Not just, you know, a, a translation mm -hmm. uh, for chat GPT or some simple things which you use in your private life. I mean, really professional applications. Um, in, in, in daily uh, uh, companies work, 12% only, and said, well, Germany is at the end of the chain. No, European Union-wide, they are on top of the chain. The average is at 8% only. Yeah. What does it tell me? That there are certain reasons for, um, for, for, for companies not having made that step. One, th one reason is uh, AI strategy, that's a big subject, is not always defined, it is not even existing, or if it's defined, it might go in the wrong direction. Uh, without really understanding what, what artificial intelligence uh, really mean and how you somehow massage it into your daily daily process. That is one thing. Um, another thing is for companies who are a little bit advanced, they start with pilot projects, you know, they, they let their engineers experiment a bit, um, or they, they go for, for, for prototypes, for cool ideas in cooperation with startups or universities, but at the end of the day, they said, oh, that's a nice product, but who needs it? Yeah. You know that that's certainly a, a, you know a little bit of an obstacle here. Um, and on the other hand, that that's a good thing for for companies like us or for even countries like you yeah. to be a bit more on the green field in order to go in the right direction and to, yeah. to learn from others where it didn't work that yeah. uh, well. These data that you gave me are 
from the perspective of Bosnia, quite good, because there is a lot of green field that where the companies, which are now uh, developing it on a on a good level, yep. they have the opportunity to to sell and to to make revenue. So yep. that that does not have to be. Yeah. A big problem. It can be a good opportunity. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in, in private life, many people are playing with AI. Uh, yeah. Of course, they, they use ChatGPT. They use some image manipulation things, yeah. like we we saw on stage this morning, where you are suddenly a Viking or whatever I was <laughs> uh, this morning. Um, easy, easy tools which would have taken much, much, much more time in the past to manipulate yeah. that. So today, you click a button on your cell phone and. You look like, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. from one <laughs> second to the other. And it's, it's easy. Yeah. But uh, it, it's also um, having a lot of, a lot of uh, risks when, yeah. when, when you have so many tools for everyone available. Yeah. I joined a, a conference uh, about a year ago with the hyperscalers like Google and AWS and, and Microsoft. And we were invited as well to even talk about ethics in AI. Yeah. Before the European Union law came out, uh, uh, end of last year, early this year, I don't know, uh, we, we were even talking, what could we do against deep fakes? And there was, a, there was a person, I think it was one of the lead engineers from Silicon Valley, uh, introducing a new API, which is a kind of tool which other companies like Facebook, Instagram can use, can build mm -hmm. into their yeah. technology. And again, that was a year ago, and, and the guy took a picture of uh, another participant of the meeting, he had a white shirt on, and he sent that, um, that image from his cell phone to an engineer. He was speaking a bit, telling about, I don't know what, uh, at, at the company, and after two minutes he said, hey James, are you ready? And he integrated that guy sitting in front of me with a white shirt into a movie, uh, showing that person in Singapore, I think it was Singapore, somewhere in Asia, uh, killing someone, really, in, in, a, in, a, in a blue shirt, not a, a white anymore. And that was so so realistic that you can imagine uh, what kind of a shitstorm yeah. that would have caused if this would be published in Facebook or so. Yeah. I'm usually, it's 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 amazing story. I mean, uh, right after the Olympics uh, finished this year, mm -hmm. Uh, people on TikTok started using AI to yeah. do different kind of flips, which go from sports to the, the most horrifying stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a there is uh, from my perspective danger inside of it Absolutely. because uh, I was in San Francisco last year, and uh, there was a conference where they were speaking about uh, okay if we decide to put a border around mm -hmm. what can be done in the AI by our guys, which we consider to be good guys. Mm -hmm. You know, we have our protocols, we we know that we are doing good stuff. Yep. And if we as a good guys decide to, to put it in a bracket, you know, to to, 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 to shorten it's how how far away it can go. Who can stop the bad guys? Of who can stop the bad guys? Yeah. If I would have an answer on that, uh, yeah. I'm gonna be rich tomorrow. <laughs> Only the, the, the good guys can uh, certainly do some things to stop the bad guys. Mm -hmm. We discussed certain technologies to detect deep fakes in videos mm -hmm. with a kind of digital watermark or uh, with voice, a deep, deep fake for voices. You know, when you simulate someone's, someone's voice, there are certain technologies which you can apply. And if, if you follow the, the act of AI, um, then you are at least legally uh, in, in a bad shape if you, if you infringe it. Yeah. However, there are always bad guys, and yeah. I don't think you can completely stop it. Um, mm. You yourself or the the uh, society, they have to decide, is it um, a, a reliable source of yeah. that fake or even non-fake, or, yeah. or can I just pressure it? Yeah. This is a question everyone has to ask for himself. But um, when it comes to professional applications like our, our uh, uh, prostate cancer prevention, there are many images. Um, going into a, into a model, even to create a, a computer vision model, or um, after an, 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 a scan of your prostate, you know, hundreds or even thousands of images are created. Who guarantees that they are coming from a, from a scanner rather than from, I don't know, somewhere yeah. kind of dark, fake corner in, in, in I don't know where? 
Um, this is where data privacy and data security comes into yes. the game. And that's also what, what we provide to, to our customers, not only solutions around certain applications, but also security, making sure yeah. that the privacy of data is given. Yeah, and uh, what I've also seen that uh, also the big corporations are not so eager uh, to let it all happen because, uh, specifically IT corporations, because mm. Uh, they all of them want wants their own solutions which they will monetize. So basically, I believe that in the end it's going to be like nivellate itself mm -hmm. uh, in the market. I believe that we will end up in a good place rather than than have the black scenario. I, I hope you're right, and I think um, there is another kind of century of AI coming in the next couple of years. When, when quantum computing becomes yeah. real, I mean, there is a lot of research already going mm -hmm. on, but quantum computing is, is, uh, is, is doing a revolution to what we see today with AI once it's applicable and also in a, in a certain cost uh, frame mm -hmm. um, where everyone, not everyone, but most professional companies can even buy. Today it's too expensive and it's yeah. not completely finished. But then it, it makes it open doors for for for, uh, for 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 criminal people, but it also uh, uh, improves the way how yeah. we can prevent that. And maybe last question: uh, How do you see our future next 20, 30, 50 years with everything in place? Oh, that's uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, go and, and watch a science fiction movie and then you may see how it looks like and that doesn't even te uh, tell you too much about AI. But I, I had a discussion some years ago with an AI expert um, long before ChatGPT and he told me, and he was wrong I must say, he told me that in 2000, I think he said 30, uh, the first computer, he said computer, is going to write a, 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 a book, a story, a criminal story with all emotions included. I think ChatGPT does it today already, if yeah. you want. And he also said that um, that uh, uh, um, autonomic driving, like driving a car, a truck, or even even railroads uh, without a driver, is happening in he said 2045. We, even our yeah. company, is is helping um, to 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 get there. And what scared me a lot is that in 2017, he said uh, the first heart surgery on a mm -hmm. human being is going to be made by a, a robot. Right. And uh, he, I said he was wrong. I think this is going to happen earlier. Uh, is it good? Is it bad? I'm not sure. Knows. <laughs> we'll know once we, if we live up to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But there is a theory that uh, with all of this, maybe we're all going to go back to be goose farmers. Yeah and start providing those basic stuff yeah. that, that our workforce will, in yeah. fact, forget. Yeah. And that we're going to be living of selling meat, potatoes, <laughs> and yeah, stuff. Absolutely. So yeah. who knows? Yeah, who knows? Uh, Martin, thanks a lot. Uh, Thank you. Great knowledge. Thanks for visiting Sarajevo. Enjoy it. Enjoy the gastronomical offer, everything. Mm -hmm. You're more than welcome. Thank you a lot.